This is Larry the Barber Man, and today I'm in Telford at Barber Connect 2017 with Leanne Buckley, gentleman's stylist. By day, Leanne Buckley is a barber. By night, she has her own apparel line, and of late, she now has her own YouTube channel. And now I'm going to do an interview with Leanne to find out her story. She's been on uh, social media, Instagram for some years. She's been very elusive. Just up until the beginning of this year, I've seen Leanne make an appearance at all these shows. So I'm sure people are keen to hear your story, Leanne. So, like I said, by day you're a barber, come men's hairstylist. Tell me how someone like yourself found yourself in barbering and found yourself loving the trade. So, basically, I'm not too sure whether people know my age, but I'm, I am 30. Um, and I left school and didn't really know what path I wanted to take, really, and, and where I wanted to go. Um, so, I was always pretty good at sport. So I was like, right, I'm going to go and do a sports course thinking I'd go down that path. And I never even envisioned being a barber or even working with hair, to be honest with you. Because um, my mum's a hairdresser and everyone was like, oh, are you going to be a hairdresser like your mum? And I was always like, no, that's not for me, that. Because um, I, I was always like really sporty and stuff as well. So I just went, went down that path, went to college, did three years in college. Um, and then I came out of that. Um, looking for work, couldn't really be bothered, you know, all that mm, sort of thing. Um, and then I went to college and thought, right, I'll go and do ha a hairdressing course. So it's all a little bit scatty, really. Like I say, I didn't, I didn't really know what I wanted to do or what I wanted to be, and I was really envious and jealous of friends, like. Um, you know, some of them have got r really good, good, career, good careers. They went to university. Some of them are teachers. They start getting their own houses. And, you know, and I'm like, oh, my God, I really don't know what I want to be. I wish I knew what I wanted to be. Um, so, like I say, I went to college and I did um, hairdressing. And I did my level one and my level two. My level one, I'm not too sure whether... It's a little bit pointless, the level one, but I had, to, I had to do it anyway, and I did the level two as well. I never went back to do my level three, um, just for personal reasons, really. Um, and I, I never went back to do it. And in, in the meantime, while I was at college doing hairdressing and that, I was um, working in retail. I've always worked in retail, even when I was doing my sports course and stuff as well, and I went to do my hairdressing. Um, so... I was in retail from about the age of 17 and then when I was doing the hairdressing I was about 22, 21, 22. So I was also, like I say, working and going to college, working and going to college and I, 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 I finished my hairdressing and I was like, right, I'm just not satisfied. Not feeling it? No. I just thought, right, I'm going to, I suppose, keep plodding along, working in retail, you see. Um, it's not like I was even doing loads of hours, neither, or anything like that. And it was just, I was getting really, really disheartened. I was stuck in a rut. I really was, because obviously I was getting older. Um, I was like about 27 then. And I was just stood on fitting room one day. And there's absolutely no offence to anybody that works in retail or anything like that. Um, and my job role was to was being a visual merchandiser as well. So I was always very visual, basically. What it says, visual merchandiser. So I was doing like window displays and um, you know dressing things up. And you had to have an have an eye for it, basically. Um, so yeah, I was stood on fitting room and I was like. I want to cut men's hair. That's where it began. Yeah, and it was so weird. 
because loads of people say to me to this day, oh, how, how, you know, how did you, you get into it? Like, you know, did you always think you're going to be a barber? And I was like, no. So there was a girl actually who, who used to work with me at the shop and she was a, um, a mobile hairdresser as well as working in retail. And I just went over to her and I said, how do you think I can get into barbering? I don't want to go back to college again. I don't, I don't want any to be doing years in college and, you know, far arsing around basically because I'm, I'm getting too old for this now, you know. So she was like, oh, I know somebody. So I was like, no way. So she was like, yeah, 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 I'll put you forward to him. So I was like, all right, cool, but you need to let them know that I can't cut men's hair. And she's like, yeah, 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 it's fine. So I was like, right, okay. So anyway, I got a phone call and um, they were like, come in and, and um, we'll, we'll see how you work and stuff. Just to give a little bit of a breakdown, sorry, when I was doing the hairdressing, um, the men's hair and the hairdressing course was separate. So what I always did was be the first to get somebody and say, I'll cut his hair, I'll cut his hair. Because everybody else was like, I don't want to cut his hair, I, don't, I just want to do women's, I want to do women's. So I, I had bas basics, yeah, a basic. And then I used to be at home and do my dad's and my brother's and they got butchered. And <laughs> so um, I'm losing trail of thought here now, hang on. So it just started for a dissatisfaction of females yeah. there from the point of being at college and then in retail you made that decision. Yeah. That's it, I want to cut hair. Yeah. Uh, men's hair, I want to do barbering. That was it, yeah. So on first impressions, people, someone who didn't know you wouldn't actually know this, but you actually specialise in black hair, Afro hair. Yeah, Afro-Caribbean hair, yeah. Tell me about your journey into cutting afro hair and some of the challenges that you had at the beginning when cutting afro hair? Well, I'm very fortunate really because the shop um, that I work in at the moment now is um, very multicultural. Well, we do have a lot of Afro-Caribbean hair within the shop um, and I've found being a white female, um, a lot of people would steer clear. I, d I don't know whether that's just... No, we've, we've, well, in my own experience, mm. there's justification because I used to travel a lot and if I went, if I was kind of stuck and I needed a haircut and there was only hairdressers, I would go into a hairdresser's and even with this simple cut, you could feel the lack of confidence in a Caucasian lady the patchiness, the, just the total inexperience with black hair, even though this is just the simplest of haircut. So maybe they might have thought, I'm going to get that experience with yourself. Stereotyping, I guess. Yeah, very much so. Very much so stereotyping. Um, to me, it's something that's just... I don't really see it as a big thing because it's something that I just do anyway. The... Afro-Caribbean hair and the Asian hair and like I say with the shop being multicultural it's just something that's just really natural within the shop. So tell me about kind of how you feared doing your first skin fade on a black person. It must, there must have been some difference or a sense of anxiety during the early stages. Do you know Coupled with the fact that people didn't trust you at all. So I can remember going in with a uh, a trimmer and I was really out my comfort zone and I was thinking to myself can I do this or can't I do this because the hair is so so different to Caucasian hair so I was like right just do it try it, it it's got to work it has to work so I went in with um, I think it would have been a detailer back back then because I use Andis now so I would have got it I went in with a detailer and I remember thinking, right, what, what, what do I do next? <laughs> but because I was around um, other people that worked in the shop that cut hair, I sort of picked things up from them. So I was like, right, okay, so you need to go with the grain, not just against the grain. 
So I think it was something like he just had a one on top and then a, a skin fade on the sides. Um, and I remember just thinking, how am I going to get these? It's sort of like the hair clogs together and you have to comb against it and then go with the grain. Comb against it and go with the grain. And everybody says to me, they're like, oh, Afro-Caribbean hair is so difficult. Um, the only thing I find difficult with Afro-Caribbean hair is the effort that goes into it. Like someone might come in and they'll go, oh, you've got an easy one today. It's only a one all over. And I'm thinking, yeah, but you have to go in every which direction to try and get all, all the like blotches, like the, the thicker patches in the hair. It's hard work. There's, there's a lad I used to work with as well, and he was like, oh, he hates doing Afro hair. <laughs> I enjoy it, but he thinks it's hard work, but I enjoy it, so, yeah. You don't need to hold it with the comb, you just pick it up, cut. Yeah. Pick it up, yeah, cut. Yeah, Whereas in yeah. Caucasian here, you have to hold it and cut, else it's just going to yeah. hit the floor. Well, I, I, I th a big thing for me was um, freehand work. So, no clipper guards whatsoever. Oh, yeah, you need to know that as well. Yeah, because you need to have that for the finishing. You can't have a guard on for finishing no. to get that nice, yeah, dense, yeah, hedge like yeah, yeah. finish. So I really, I really enjoy that, and you get the Afrocomb and you pull it all out. You get some people in and then they've, um, they've not washed their hair for time and they let the curls go really, really tight. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, so it takes you about half an hour pulling it all out with the Afrocomb. Good exercise for the arm. It is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so during this whole course, what would you say your biggest challenge was as a female barber, either in Afro hair or Caucasian hair? The shape up is a biggie. If the shape up's not on point, there's, there's just no point. <laughs> they really, really like it, really, really crisp and, and really straight as well. And the same with the neckline as well and things like that. So, yeah, I think that was a big thing for me was just trying to get it, combing it down, going in, combing it down, going back in and then getting the cutthroat on it. But um, you can't always use a cutthroat on people with Afro-Caribbean hair because they're prone to bumps. And, and keloids. Yeah. So, a lot, if, if they're new, a lot of people I'll say to them, I'll just say, are you okay with the raising? They'll be like, I'm okay. It's generally they're okay around the front, but not around the neck area. Also the same with a shaver. Never use a shaver with Afro-Caribbean hair, ever. I just don't risk it. It's just the way the hair grows out the um, follicle. Cool, yeah, no, exactly. And what, kind of challenges have you had with the customers themselves as a female? Do you know what? It's not been too bad. Uh, it's not now. At the start, when I first started out, it was really, really tough. But I, I was like, right, I'm going to work twice as hard. Do you know what? I'm going to prove you wrong. And I'm going to give you the sickest haircut that you've ever had. Whether it takes me an hour or two hours or three hours, you're going to leave here and think that is the sickest haircut I've ever had. And it was done by a lady. And just own it, really. Like I say, I, I, like you said earlier on about stereotyping, and very much stereotyping. Um, when I first started out, a lot of people were like, oh, you're not cutting my hair because you're a woman. You're not cutting my hair. And I was like, well, just let me do it. I, I, do you know what I used to say, actually? I used to say, right, let me do it, and if you don't like it, don't pay for it. Yeah. I mean, there was critiquing it and thought, do you yeah. know what? I've got credit, yeah. to, credit where credit to. If you pay. don't like it, don't pay for it. So they're like, all oh, right, okay, go on then. Because my goal was always to do quality over quantity. Okay. To that's start a, that's with. That's a good philosophy. Always, I always had that in the back of my mind. Right, Leanne, you need to do quality over quantity. Um, and then with that comes quantity. Because you're doing quality. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it does. Yeah. yeah, you work on the, the quality. And then once you've mastered the quality... Comes quantity. Quality of quantity. Mm. Quantity of quality, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said one of the things that helped you to improve your game with Afro-Caribbean hair in particular and all haircuts 
was YouTube. You've actually got your own YouTube channel now. Tell me what you're aiming to do with your YouTube channel. So, a few months back, I did a promo video um, of a before and after, just to try and keep things a little bit fresh. Um, not just be your standard barber that you just go and see and you get a haircut for 10 minutes and then you go. Um, so I did the promo video just to be in people's minds as well. Okay. And I think social media is so, so powerful um, that I thought to myself, right, I'm going to do this promo video and just see if it opens any doors or see if it takes me anywhere. Um, and like I say, just to get people talking. So I uploaded it onto Facebook and it also went onto Instagram. Um, and then I thought, do you know what? I'm going to upload it onto YouTube. It's the first video I've ever put on there, to be honest. Um, and I was getting a lot of inboxes saying, oh, I wish it was longer because I want to see how you work. So I was like, right, OK, then that can open up a few doors. I might start doing some little tutorial videos, but nothing that's too long because I think people can get a bit bored in a way, really. Um, or even if it's just short bursts of a process of a taper or a scissor cut or um, styling, um, what products you're using. There's just so much that goes into hair. Um, it's just nice to see how somebody else approaches that look, really. Um, no, it would make a quite interesting video. Yeah. If you've done Afro hair. So if you said, I'm doing Afro hair, because what would happen? They would look and think, nah, this white girl could never cut that oh, guy's hair. Yeah. And then you prove them wrong. That would be a massive hit. I know. Do you know what? I wanted to bring um, someone with Afro-Caribbean hair today, and I couldn't get anyone. OK, well, you can do it on the YouTube videos. Yeah. So how would you say that uh, Instagram is helping you? As a female barber or just as a barber? As a barber, yeah. I, I don't really like getting labelled with this female barber, I must admit. <laughs> That's why I said I corrected myself at the end. Yeah. <laughs> I like um, I like just being the same as anybody else. I, but in regards to Instagram, um, I think I started Instagram up, I suppose, when it just started to take off. Which, which was? Yeah, it was about... I reckon it was about two and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. So that's when I started barbering about two and a half years ago. So I just thought, right, I'll just set Instagram up because I wasn't an Instagram user. I was just all about Facebook. Mm -hmm. No one even really used Instagram then, to be honest. Not in my circle of friends or anybody that I knew. But for me, it was something that was personal to me, work-wise. So I thought, that's a platform for me to pr promote myself, basically. So that's why I set up, the, set up the Instagram page and I thought, right, and I was thinking of all these different names and silly names and I was like, what can I call myself? I was like, I really don't know what to call myself. And there's all, I was Googling, and there's all these cheesy names and then I was like, right, just keep it simple, just go with Leanne. Just <laughs> really boring, but just go with Leanne. And, and that's, yeah, Leanne underscore, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just thought, right, I'll just go with Leanne. And then I started posting um, uh, a few different pictures that I was that I was doing um, from my kitchen at home um, because at this point I was still in retail. I was just about to. I was just making the move. So yeah, I was taking pictures in my kitchen <laughs> on my phone and uploading them onto Instagram, and I was. Do you know what? Automatically, I was getting people contacting me, and I hadn't even been bar I hadn't even worked in a barber's shop, and I was getting people saying, "Oh, why don't you come and work for us?" And when I look back now, it's actually really overwhelming the response I was getting on my pictures. Um, and then I bought a Canon. Do you know what? I'm not even too sure because ev everybody SLSL. goes on about these lovely cameras and SLR. that. I must be honest with you, I can't really be bothered with it. 
I just stick with my Samsung 7 <laughs> and I haven't got time for it neither. I think you need to know the, they are brilliant if you know how to use them, but I just haven't got the patience to... Um, I, I've put a few up on there, but I just haven't got the patience. Um, but yeah, Instagram's been massive for me. Really, really big. Oh, I think I understand now why you hadn't come to any barbering things, because in your own mind, as much as you think I've been cutting hair for years, I haven't, in fact. No. So maybe that's why you made, started making an appearance mm. this year, reading in between the lines. Yeah, and not only that, I feel, I feel more confident in myself as well. Okay, so it's a lack of confidence at some stages. Mm. Okay, so you've had to drop the confidence today, obviously, because you've been on the live stage here at the biggest or the largest barbering expo in Europe, yeah. which is Barber Connect. Yeah. Tell me about your experience on the main stage and what you did. Being backstage with big names in the industry as well um, was rather nerve wracking. And there was spotlights like this as well. And you're trying to work and it's really hot and you you can't see what you're doing. At one point I had um, the light on my phone and I was holding my phone and I was, I was trying to prep my model and I was just like, oh my God, and I was stressing out. Um, and then Alan came over and he was like, Leanne, oh, um, you just have to say a few words, like where you're from, where you're coming from, you'll get a head mic. And I was like, what? So then obviously I was beginning, the heart was going a little bit then. And um, you can hear the crowd behind the curtains as well. Um, and then the next minute it was over. It just went so quick. And I was like, get me back on there. I want to go back on now. I was stressing for no reason. Yeah, definitely. But I, once I was up there, I felt really comfortable. I was nervous, but I did feel comfortable in what I was doing because I was confident in what I was doing. Maybe not as much on the, on the speaking part, but the actual cutting of the hair. I tried my best, that's all I can do. Oh, you've done very well. You First time, well. yeah. And who do you seek your inspiration from? Which other female barbers do you seek your inspiration from? Oh. Okay, well, let me change that slightly. What barbers do you seek your inspiration from? I've got a lot of female barbers, you see, that I can think off the top of my head. So, there's Nay. She's Nay Queen of Fades. She's from, I think, Amsterdam. She works within Mockham Barbers. She is absolutely amazing. Now, I followed her from when I first started up Instagram. And her fades, uh, they look as though they're actually filtered. That they're, they're just so blurry. I'm like, how do you even do that? And she, she won't give her secrets away. This was like years ago. She, she won't give her secrets away, but yeah, she's really good. Um, I also, from the start as well, I want to set up Instagram would have to be Danny, uh, Toasty Styles. She's a cool barber. She does some really, really nice work. Um, Stay Gold from America, Sophie. She's brilliant. She's killing it. She, she's, a, she's next level. She's different. I think American barbers work different to, to British barbers. So I'm always l learning from her work and, and seeing what she's doing and posting on social media. Because they use different clippers as well. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, they, they tend to come away from the wild where that's all I use, near enough. So just before we move on to the next question, Leanne, is there anybody else that you'd want to mention? Yeah, it would have to be Sean from Cut and Sell. He's a really, really cool guy. I reckon I've got loads of inspirations in the industry. There's lots of people that I learn off and learn from. He is so, so good. Not just cutting hair, but the business side of it. He's a massive, massive inspiration to me. He's what I'm trying to, trying to be, basically. Um, I don't know how he juggles everything. I think he's got something like four shops now, hasn't he? In two years? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Four sh three, four shops. Uh, he DJs. He looks after God knows how many members of staff. Um, his branding and whatnot is brilliant as well. His apparel is brilliant. So for me, it would have to be Sean, yeah. He's a cool guy as well. 
I, I, met, I met him last numerous year. Numerous yeah. times, yeah. Yeah, he gave me a free T-shirt. <laughs> go over and see him in Ireland. Yeah, I've been asked. I need to go, don't I? I've been asked. Yeah, I said come over. But I said, I, he said, I've always got a job here for you if you want one. I said, no. I said, you're too expensive. What he asked for, I said, you're too expensive <laughs> for what he wanted, wanted to rent the chairs out to me for. So, but he's a cool guy. He's a good man. And another thing, you've got a line of apparels. I tried to buy one the other day and you've told me today that they're no longer in stock. When are these uh, T-shirts coming over back again? So... The T-shirts will be making a comeback. Whether they've got the same branding on them, I'm not sure. Okay. And why did you we'll uh, design these T-shirts and your new logo? What was the purpose of them initially? Initially, was like I say, it was just it's all just to do with branding for me. Um, when I started out, it was just literally trying to get my name out there, trying to get known for what I do, not just being someone, you know, that does five, six days a week and then goes home. I, wa I want to be more than that. I want, I want to push myself and be the best that I can be in this industry. And the only way by doing that, I suppose, is being seen. That's why I've been at Barber Connect today, is because I've been seen by doing things like the promo video and stuff. So I thought, right, okay, if I send a few out, get some barbers to wear them, who I look up to. They might take a selfie, um, you know, tag me in it. Um, I gave a few out, well, I gave loads out actually to clients, gave all the snapbacks out. Oh, can I have one for holiday for Ibiza? I was like, yeah, and then they were sending me pictures and I was like, that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I was just trying to be a little bit different, I suppose, just try trying to, segregate myself from what the norm is and try and build a brand so expect them back soon yeah okay mm, nice one. maybe with a different branding on it cool and just two more questions what part of the barbering industry is exciting you right now menspire because they absolutely kill it they are so good um I think what it is with Menspire is they are just so different to what everybody's doing at the moment. Um, and in regards to that, because they are so different, you're like, how do they do that? How have they cut that like that? Why is that bit of hair a little bit longer? And you want to know the tricks, but y you try and figure them out. And I think that's why this job's so exciting, because you're always learning. So they, they do very like um, hair, I call it hair dressy cuts on top and then the barbering element on the sides. So yeah, it's men-spired for me. Okay. They're brilliant. And what do you feel is hindering the industry right now? Mm, all the, um, I can't wrap my head around it, you know. I, I really don't understand it. People bashing each other on social media and that cut's not good and look at that blend and I can do better than that and I really can't wrap my head around it. I'm a giver me, I like to show people, I, I even say to people locally, I, I was saying to a lad actually the other week, he's not very good, he, he works in Chester, he's not very good with the afro hair and I said look, I said I'll come into your shop and I'll show you. Um, but yeah, all the hate, I don't get it. I know there's a lot of barber love and I, I reckon that they outweigh the hate, but I just sometimes just don't understand some people's mentality towards each other. I think we all need to look after one another and help each other. Okay. And a big closing question for you to help other, maybe, female Caucasian barbers. What advice would you give them if they had a black or Afro hair client come into the seat? What words of advice could you give them to help them overcome the fear, maybe, of dealing with Afro hair? Knowing what you know. Yeah, I think I'd just say to them, stop, think, take a deep breath. You know what you're doing. And just go from there. And everything will be all right. And you learn from your mistakes anyway. I'm, I'm still, I still learn from mistakes today. 
Um, I, I think that's all I'd give, just to say, you know, you can do it. Don't underestimate yourself. Do what you've got to do. Get on with it. But you know what I thought he was going to say? I thought he was going to rap to me then. He was going, <laughs> stop. And I thought he was going to say, collaborate and listen. Give me some vanilla ice kind of stuff going on. Stop. <laughs> Leanne Buckley, thank you ever so much for giving me your time. Oh, I'm no, sure thank people you, Larry. know a lot more about you now after your spin of elusiveness. So thank you so much. I wish you well, and I hope that you come back and go on to do many more shows like you have today. So I wish you very well. Thanks, thank Larry. you very much. Thank you. Cheers. You're welcome.